Before uh, we carry on with these two palettes, with these two palettes, I think there are um, they have two colors here which I'm going to use. So these are the Roman Schmals um, watercolors. Now, before we do that, I wanted to show you. So there's some mixes here that we will be creating, but this color on top is actually a color that is uh, one of the colors from my palette. So by now you would have seen two. So you saw the gold. Uh, I'm not telling you the name of this one just yet. So it's this kind of like a nude color. And the beauty of it is that it goes from a beautiful range of dark to very light. And these colors are great for skin tones, going from Caucasian to darker skin tones um, in one color. And it's really, really nice because it kind of has this change. It starts off looking quite milky and then it dries into this gorgeousness. So I'm going to show you uh, a little bit of this color. Again, probably a bit uh, cheeky to do that, but what can I say? I have been enjoying my own stuff. I don't think there is much wrong with it. So I'm just going to use some from the jar here so this paint is still quite fresh um, the new palette is I'm going to give you all the information soon as soon as I can so you can see when you first start it kind of looks um, quite milky and gorgeous and it has this sort of creamy feel to it but it does dry to that color so uh, don't be fooled thinking that it looks um, pastel. So let me actually, just for the repetition of things, I'm going to do that here as well. I'm going to show you all the different ranges this color can go to. Okay, so we've got we've got ten ranges here that we can create. So I'm going to start with the darkest. So there you go. You can see once the pigment settles, a bit of magic happens. So let's do with like a quite saturated color first. And now we're going to start. Adding a bit more water so that you can see all the beautiful ranges this color can go to. Oh no, I don't want this one flowing into here. Mm. There we go. Okay, so I have now swatched them out here and they need to dry. So again, you'll see how they look right at the end because this milkiness that you can see here, that will go once they're fully dry so you can see the full color. Okay, um, so let's now focus on the Roman Schmal. So there's two colors that I really really love for mixing so you can see this one and that's the Aquarius Brown kind of similar to the Daniel Smith Sedona genuine um, and then the other color I like for these sort of mixes you can see cobalt sea blue 
is a bit different to the Schmincke one. Um, and then another beautiful cobalt. They have a cobalt seal also. A bit more different. I really like this color. It's like a sort of gorgeous, gorgeous teal color, turquoisey color. And then the one that I like for this mix is the cobalt turquoise. So it's more muted. And that's the one that I'm going to use. And um, I'll stamp out the same kind of shape here and then we'll go in and do the swatches as well. Okay, so back to mixing. I have the Aquarius Brown ready here. It's beautiful on its own and that's what I said. Not every uh, brand has this exact color. The similar colors you can find, but I really like it. So. I'm just thinking, what if I'm going to add another color into this mix? Like a quinacridon fuchsia? Just to keep in with that theme and see what mixes we get. So I'll show you, these are the mixes we got just with the two colors here, these two. And I wonder what will happen when we introduce quinacridon fuchsia. I just got really um, curious about it. So let's do that. So we've got more of a muted palette here with the exception of this super bright color. So let's start by mixing again. So I'm going to first of all just mix a touch of this color into here. It needs a bit more. Again just watch it sort of what mixes you have previously so you don't end up repeating. And now quinacridon fuchsia. Ha, huh, that's really interesting. Gorgeous color. Lovely muted. Now that I have um, added quinacridon fuchsia, I wonder how granulating this still will be. and also color separating. So now this needs a bit more, I think, a bit more of that. Oh no, it's changing. Okay, I'm gonna leave it. Wow, that's pretty good. Cute. Okay, let's go a bit more this way. So now we will be graying these colors out a bit more. So I don't want these colors to merge so I'm just going to separate them real quick like that. Okay. So we're obviously now adding purples to this variation and now let's get to our grey tones so into that I will try to oh. so with the Aquarius Brown same as Sedona you just need a tiny bit because it's very very strong just overpowers really quickly. Um, okay, I'll go with this color for now. Okay. 
and then with the purple just to get it back to grey again so the neutrals you mix yourself they tend to be a lot more interesting than the ones you could buy in a tube although they're very convenient when they come out of a tube so going back to grey tones Okay. This is going to be the final one. All right. I'll let them dry a little and then I'll show you the close ups. So they're still drying and I wanted to show you um, how they look when they're still wet and how gorgeous they are. So if I just move them around like that. I think this one is particularly interesting. I haven't mixed anything like that before. It's gorgeous. And how stunning are all of these with the turquoise coming through some really really nice mixes so when I was mixing these they kind of looked grey but as time is um, passing it kind of looks more purpley lilac-y just really interesting okay another thing I wanted to share which really isn't in the favorites um well i wouldn't go as far as saying favorite favorite but i definitely kind of enjoyed a textural play so here i have a little sample where i mixed two things so i used the daniel smith watercolor ground in buff titanium i had this for a long time and i kind of didn't really use it and i really have been enjoying the mixed media uh, textures and all the kind of how the oil paint dries and how the acrylic paint dries how you can build up that body that you can't do with the watercolor so i decided to kind of um, incorporate it with my watercolor so what you do is you use the ground now you can tint it this already comes tinted and the color here is i'm just there's a little dry bit there that i want to take out so this is the buff titanium and you can get a white and I believe there's also like shimmery ones available. One is gold, I know for sure. And then there is another one, maybe like a pearlescent white. Anyway, I don't know, maybe they have added even more colors um, since I've checked. But when I was buying this one, I didn't want to have like a really white color, which I thought would be kind of a bit too much. But these days I do like white, however, I think it's easier to take buff titanium and tint it with a white gouache. So I've used this one, which is the Talents Gouache Designer um, Extra Fine Quality in white. So these are available on Amazon. And what I've done is I just scooped some out onto a palette um, and then also scooped out some of this gouache right here and tinted it to the right color because it's a bit too too dark for me and this one is not quite white not quite dark so somewhere in the middle and I, I felt like it looks quite nice so Basically, once it dries, you need to let it dry completely and then you go over it. So you can see when it dries, it leaves all these lovely textures 
and if you touch it it's got this kind of like a sandy feel to it and that's what creates the textures so over it you then can use uh, watercolor the way i like working with it is not to cover the entire page with it but just do certain areas just for the textural purpose and i like the watercolor going from the plain paper onto the texture so i hope i can still demonstrate it here we've got some white areas just to show you how the watercolor changes um, i'm just going to go and change my uh, water and i will demo the um, watercolor ground so what i haven't actually done before is um, use this mix uh, on the watercolor ground so i thought i'll do that today and I will um, use those two colors that I used for the previous mix. I will add a touch of the Grenacard and Magenta as well. So somewhere, somewhere around there. Okay, so let's say we start on the white of the paper. I wonder how the granulation will work on the ground. I'll just do Aquarius Brown on its own here as well. So I feel like the granulation is not coming through as beautifully as it is on the paper. So it would be great to just possibly uh, use the colors as they are. They seem to do quite well like that on the paper and the ground. Okay, I'm going to let it dry and then we'll have a closer look. Okay, so first let's have a look at the, these swatches right here. So we have Payne's Grey 30%, Payne's Grey 60% and Payne's Grey. And my favorite this month is this one here, the 30%. Then we have the whites and both are good for different uh, reasons. Chinese white by Dervant drawing pencil and soft white a Holbein pencil. Here, this color, you can refer to it as nude for now until I do all the kind of 
color details and the release. So you can see it has dried now. It's got a darker color here and lighter color. If you wanted to deepen it still, I would add something um, like a possibly a reddish color, um, like mahogany or something like that would be a good color to just make it more rich and still darker. Um, the color that springs to mind, there's a Daniel Smith that I really used to love. Let me just have a look. I think that would be a good mix. So the color I had in mind is the Paraline Maroon. I think that would be quite nice, but it's quite specific. So if you don't have it, any type of burnt sienna adding to the nude would be a good way of kind of make the skin tone even deeper and richer because it would have that warm red undertone to it. And then let's look at the um, at these mixes which are super super gorgeous. So where did I lose my brush? So we have all the schminkers up here and you can see that Cobble Turquoise had done a great job here and it's got all these sort of more vibrant. If you look at these swatches down below you can see that obviously the brightness of the Cobble Turquoise come through, comes through even more than here. So here you still have the turquoise coming through quite a lot but it's slightly muted as the starting point is slightly muted. So the Cobalt Turquoise uh, compared to the cobalt turquoise in Schminke are quite different as you can see and hopefully you can pick up on the beautiful beautiful mixes right here um, some of my favorites would be something like this and then these sort of colors right here and moving on to Roman Schmal right here at the bottom we have Aquarius Brown oh let me repeat these ones so we've got Quinacridone Gold Hue, Magenta and Cobalt Turquoise and here Aquarius Brown, Quinacridone Fuchsia and Cobalt Turquoise and then these gorgeous mixes so amongst my favorites would be at the end here some of these and these now this color is quite intriguing um, I haven't been able to mix anything like this, come to think. Um, so maybe even these two very, very interesting colors. And yeah, you could even add more colors to it. You could add a fourth color and see what you can get there. But basically, that's your color theory in a nutshell. Let's look at these swatches that we have done. So things have now dried and you probably can see that around this area where the ground is the watercolor looks a lot more softer and it has lost that gorgeous gorgeous uh, pigment separation and the granulation so it's harder to pick up it's like it's been like a soft focus has been added to it so that's why I like using very small areas of it and for example imagine this whole area would be watercolor and somewhere here there would be a couple of smaller areas where I would raise the texture of the paper and create some gorgeousness because you can see that it looks beautiful. It looks completely matte, it doesn't have a gloss as oil paints or acrylics uh, would do. Um, so that's basically what it is and then there's some gorgeous areas right here at the bottom I don't know if you would be able to pick up on that um, they are like my favorite area right here something very magical is happening so I hope you found this um, month's favorites um, interesting Maybe you picked up something that you haven't tried before. Uh, let me know in the comments what um, favorites have you discovered lately. And yeah, I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.